Hi grade 12s, I am Mr. R. K. Khan. Today's lesson is going to be about the structure of DNA and its specific functions. Uh, I will advise you to please watch the previous lesson in this playlist uh, as we have already discussed the location of DNA, the three specific locations in a eukaryotic cell and, we've, and we have already discussed the discovery of DNA. So please watch the previous lesson in this playlist before you watch this lesson. Okay, structure of DNA. DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. That is a full uh, uh, expansion of the abbreviation. Right, in the previous lesson, I talked about, I used the analogy of a building. So DNA is a building and we know that buildings are made up of bricks or building blocks. So the bricks or the building blocks that make up DNA we also call it monomers, so building blocks, monomers that make up DNA is called nucleotides. Nucleotides. Right, so if you write down nucleotides here, nucleotides. Okay, so in a, uh, we all know that there are different types of bricks. So there's clay bricks, the cement bricks, and so forth. So different bricks are made up of different components. So just like that, the nucleotides, the nucleotides that make up DNA are also made up of specific components. And there are three components that make up nucleotides. So we can number them, number one, number two, and number three. So the first one is a phosphate, Phosphate ion, and we use a symbol in the uh, elemental elemental table P to stand for uh, phosphate. The second one, the second one is deoxyribose sugar, sugar, and we use S uh, to represent deoxyribose sugar, and then the last one is. Uh, nitrogen, 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 nitrogen base, and we use the abbreviation NB. So we have three components: a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogen base. All right. So we. I've drawn a schematic diagram here to represent one nucleotide. So this schematic diagram is one nucleotide. All right, and as we have, we have discussed, we fully fully using the the, the symbols, uh, fully using the symbols. Let me just take a different color. So here we can write P. P, so this is our phosphate, the circle. Then we have our uh, pen, pentagon, no hexagon. Yeah, pentagon, sorry. And then we'll have six, uh, our sugar molecule. So our phosphate links to our sugar molecule, and then our sugar molecule links to our NB, our nitro nitrogen base. All right, and we've from our previous lesson, we have already discussed nitrogen bases or bases, and these bases are we learned A, which is adenine, T, which is thymine, and C, which is cytosine, and G, which is guanine. All right, so any one of these can fit in this block here. So we can have an adenine, we can have a thymine, we can have a cytosine, or we can have a guanine. Right, so then we have a phosphate, sugar, and one of the, one of these four nitrogen bases, and this whole molecule is equal to makes up one nucleotide. Right, so many many more nucleotides have to come together to form a DNA, a de deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, grade twelves. Before we move on to the to actual uh, drawing of the structure of DNA, we need to understand two important uh, scientific terms. All right, so we've learned 
about the four bases adenine <clears throat> thymine cytosine and guanine <clears throat> All right, so these four bases are grouped in pairs, right? So in the DNA molecule, A for adenine always uh, bonds with T, thymine, and C, cytosine, always bonds with G, guanine. That is in a DNA molecule. So there's two, uh, there's two important scientific terms that we need to understand is pyrimidines and purines. So if I write pyrimidines, P pyrimidines and then purines. Pyrimidines and purines. So the pyrimidines, the, the pyrimidines between these four, these four bases are your thymine and your uh, cytosine. So these two bases are called pyrimidines. And then you have your purines, which are called adenine and guanine. Okay, so it's a bit confusing because in the DNA molecule, they are paired uh, differently to uh, uh, in relation to the groups that they are found in. Okay, so the easiest, the easy way to remember this is that your pyrimidines, pyrimidine has a letter Y here, your thymine also has a letter Y, and your cytosine also has a letter Y. So you know that the pyrimidines are your thymine and your cytosine. Okay, so the the mistake that uh, some people make in the exams and so forth is just because adenine always joins with thymine in the DNA molecule, when the question comes about uh, provide the, the bases that belong to your pyrimidines, people put thymine and they put adenine instead of cytosine. So that's one of the uh, mistakes that some learners make. All right, so this is the easier, easiest way to remember which uh, two bases belongs to the pyrimidines and the purines and you know that once you have this you know which belongs to the purines okay great Charles now we're going to move on to the actual structure of the DNA molecule Okay, great. Well, so I've drawn the structure of the DNA molecule. Please forgive my drawing. It's not that uh, good. I can see that. Um, I was never good at arts and culture. <laughs> okay, so let's get down to filling in the diagram and discussing the structure of the DNA molecule. All right, so we discussed that the circles in this diagram schematic are your phosphate ions. We discussed that. So I'll write on P, P. E, P, P. Then um, my pentagon structures will be my sugar molecules or my deoxyribose sugar. So put S, 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 and S. That's my sugar molecules. Alright, so we're going to make the first rectangular rectangle. Uh, adenine, let's say it's adenine. Alright, so adenine all right, will join to what other nitrogen base? It will join to uh, th uh, thymine. It will join to thymine. Okay, so don't confuse it now. We, we already discussed that purines are your adenine and your guanine. But in the DNA molecule, the adenine always joins to thymine. So it's opposite. It must be a pyrimidine joining to a uh, a pyrimidine joining to a purine. That's how you think. That's how you remember uh, that is correct. Again, okay, it has to be A and T. So the next one, next uh, 
molecule that we can uh, nitrogen base, we can put cytosine here and we can put a guanine here or we can put a guanine and a cytosine or we can put a thymine and an adenine so we know that these bases will join so the difference uh, in the joining of these bases comes down to the number of hydrogen bonds so the bonds that join these nitrogen bases together are called hydrogen bonds and the number of hydrogen bonds differ so between adenine and thymine there are two hydrogen bonds so adenine and thymine will have two hydrogen bonds and they are weak hydrogen bonds that means they are easily uh, easily able to uh, the body is easily able to break uh, these hydrogen bonds and we'll discuss that further in further uh, in further lessons uh, when we come to when we come to dna replication meiosis and mitosis right so that is why i'm drawing it as a broken line because they are weak so there's two weak hydrogen bonds that link A and T. And then we have cytosine and guanine. We have three weak hydrogen bonds. So we have three broken lines. Here will be three broken lines. And in between T and A will have two broken lines. So it's two weak hydrogen bonds. So that's the difference between the, hydro the number of hydrogen bonds between A and T and C here, G. There's also another bond that we need to, uh, to label on this diagram. It's the bond between the phosphate and the sugar. And we call this the sugar phosphate bond. So this bond here is known as the sugar phosphate bond. The sugar phosphate. Phosphate, my space, phosphate bond. Right, so in the exam, maybe multiple choice questions, they could ask you the bond between the sugar molecule, the deoxyribose sugar molecule, and the phosphate ion. So your answer will be sugar phosphate bond. They could also ask you, what is the number of weak hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine in the DNA molecule? Your answer will be two. Or they could ask you, what is the, and then the number of weak hydrogen bonds between C and G? You write down three. So these are the types of multiple choice questions that could be asked in the exams. Okay, great. Well, so just to uh, make this more clear to you, um, in the previous lesson, I drew a, a, a structure like this. Right. Okay, so that is a DNA molecule, and then I showed you that these are the these are the bases that are joined together. So what I've done is I've actually zoomed in. So I've zoomed in this part here. I've actually zoomed into this part here, and therefore we find this structure inside this DNA molecule, this, this double helix. So we have one strand of nucleotides, one, uh, this is one nucleotide, two, three, and four, four nucleotides. All right, so we have another one going on, this is one. All right, so let's draw this. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four nucleotides, one, two, three, four nucleotides. And this, this strand of uh, nucleotides and this strand of nucleotides come together to form the double helix structure that I've discussed in the previous lesson. So please, uh, again, please go back and watch that previous lesson that I've uploaded. Uh, okay, great. Well, so now we have done that, uh, the structure of DNA. We are going to move on to uh, the specific functions of DNA. Okay, grade 12, functions of DNA. So the first function controls functioning of cells. So in, uh, the, for example, in the human body, uh, oxygen that's found in the blood, we breathe in oxygen, the oxygen moves from our lungs into our bloodstream. And thereafter, blood is diffused to all 
uh, cells in our body. So this is the type of functioning that DNA is responsible for. And it also uh, takes part in the diffusion of CO2 entering the, the surface of a leaf and oxygen leaving the surface of the leaf. So these are many, many function, functions that DNA has in the, in the functioning of the cell. So it, it controls what enters and what leaves the cell. Uh, the next one is controls protein synthesis. Controls protein synthesis. Synthesis. So protein synthesis, basically it means to make proteins. It controls the manufacturing of proteins. And we know that from... Uh, in, to, in grade 10, we learned about a, a special protein called enzymes. Okay, so enzymes are protein in nature. So these enzymes, uh, for example, enzymes take part in a biochemical process, but they do not get used up in that process. So, for example, we have an enzyme called amylase. An example, amylase. So amylase is found in the in your mouth. It's found in your mouth. And what what does the amylase uh, do? It breaks down carbohydrates. So as soon as you eat any carbohydrates, this amylase acts upon those carbohydrates and breaks it down so that the body can absorb it. So types of carbohydrates could be your uh, rice, your bread, and so forth. All right. The third one. The third and final function of DNA stores. Hereditary, hereditary information. Okay, so it stores and also and transmits it. Transmits it. All right. So stores hereditary information and then transmits it, meaning it passed passed on characteristics from parents to offspring. So, for example. Your mom or your father could have uh, blue eyes, for example, and that characteristic can be passed on to you. So that is why we say stores hereditary information and transmits it. And we know the transmission of uh, uh, DNA comes in the form of chromosomes. So we know, uh, so please, uh, this, that's why it's very important to please watch the previous lesson uh, because you need to understand what are chromosomes before you can understand this lesson. Alright, so we have 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes in the human body and we get 23 chromosomes from our father and then we get 23 chromosomes from our mother, okay, and therefore it makes, it makes you, 46 chromosomes, okay, so it makes you. So we have 46 in, in everybody has 46 chromosomes. We get 23 from our, from our mother and to, uh, from our father and 23 from our mother equaling to 20 to 46. And this is how we get some characteristics from our father and some characteristics from our mother. Okay, grade 12. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, please like this lesson. Please share it to your friends and family. And please subscribe. I thank you so much for watching.